and welcome to the last it. We've just been trying to start the episode, and Jake is just humming away to himself. It's a good song. Um, it, I'm sure it was a good song. I'm sure it was. I don't know what episode it is. It's episode one of Playoffs, though. I know that for sure. I'm Munchables. I'm joined, as always, by Lurik, and this time we're joined by a very special guest in his own super comfy blankie with little Yodas it on. It's Hysterics. How are you doing, mate? Welcome to the podcast. Oh, I'm good. Thanks for inviting me. It was, uh, it's 11 o'clock here right now, you know, a little bit last minute, and I was, I was getting comfortable, and I started watching The <laughs> Mandalorian, and I love mm-hmm. Baby Yoda, so... It all comes in, in handy, and it's it's cold here in Sydney too, so everything lines up apparently. It's it's adorable. It it's is, very it's adorable. So it looks very cuddly. I am a cuddly um, person, you, you know me. Uh, <laughs> too, I would argue too cuddly sometimes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I got <laughs> lyric. Can confirm. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna leave that to to the listener's imagination. Um, lyric, how are you doing, mate? I hear you've made it to Ireland. How are you liking yeah. the the aisles, as it were? You know, it's it's very gray, it's very green. It's I think the funniest part is just, you know, talking to someone like Jake every day and like hearing like Australian English and then here I am. And then like I get here, I'm like, man, I have no idea what anyone's saying. I actually have no <laughs> idea what anyone's saying. And it's great. I love it. But I, it also it also made me realize how like I don't know if Americanized is the word, but like how tame Dagda and Penguin are in terms of like how they sound like what their accents yeah, it's kind of kind of disappointing their accents, like, yeah chill. dude it's it's like it's like a three out of ten yeah. it's like a three out of ten it's oh, nowhere wow. close it's yeah thick irish accents are terrifying especially in dublin but terrifying. if you go to northern ireland it gets even scarier like there are some serious dude, accents in I, northern ireland. I love it i think it's great and oshin was telling me he's like oh there's tons of different kinds of accents too and i'm like mm-hmm. let me hear all of them let me hear it all <laughs> oh, it's great jealous. well we we might be doing like a little bit of a a visit around some places in Ireland after finals so we'll we'll see we'll see if we could get some good accents in um have you have you done any exploration of Dublin just yet have you been out on been out on the town or anything like that is it is it even open I've, is covid just locked it all down or it it is you know decently open and i, I went out once with with dagda and penguin so you know mm-hmm. saw dagda i've been with penguin a lot but not too much i mean the fact that you know last week was playoffs now we do have these three days where i still don't know if i'll do anything i don't cast for a while but ah we we got time after playoffs for all that stuff <laughs> true fair enough what about what about australia jake how is uh Dude. how is the quarantine stuff Dude. Going? we've been in lockdown since end of june um and Jesus. and like there's so many oh, like not. micro rules where they're like oh you can do this you can exercise within 10 kilometers and at first it was like up exercise with up to 10 people i'm not here to like you know bash what's going on but yeah there's just so much confusion f- please don't the people i will not um and yeah the whole of new south wales which is the state i'm in is now locked down uh, even like the regional areas because it's crossed up there because people have like you know gone mm-hmm. to places they shouldn't so yeah things are not looking good here in the australia and it's, it's kind of funny like you know i finally come back and i and I'm like, ah, oh, everything's normal. People aren't wearing masks outside after I had to do my mandatory quarantine after coming overseas. <laughs> and then a couple of months later, um, I'm back inside again, like another another quarantine that Lyric and I went through, yeah. you know, 10 times. I think that was the hardest thing about, I mean, it was last year for me. It was more recent for you guys, I think, where when I came back from China, it was like, in China, everything was totally back to normal by the time we left Shanghai yep. and then I got back to the UK and it was like, boom, lockdown. But now in the UK, we are technically out of lockdown. Okay. You can just do whatever you want. Even the clubs and stuff are open, oh, which sick. I'm skeptical of. I don't think, <laughs> do I'll be, don't think I'll be hitting the clubs anytime do soon. Uh, so I played Russian roulette. Still, <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's, uh, it's a little nerve wracking, but, but yeah, we are technically back, uh, we're firing on all cylinders in the UK. Uh, but enough about quarantine. Let's talk about LPL. Because uh, before we jump into playoffs conversations, because there are plenty of conversations to be had there, Lyric, you and I at the start of this season, we we did our power rankings at the very start. And then for episode one of the podcast, we amended our power rankings. And uh, with with one week of knowledge, we we changed what we thought of the teams. And even with one week of knowledge, 
Honestly, we couldn't have been much more wrong. <laughs> we have done a terrible job of predicting. IG, what no, was IG, happen. please. JDG as well. JDG has absolutely True. ruined everyone. LNG did way too well. Um, so Jake also did his own power rankings I at did. the start of this year. Totally separate to ours. But for the sake of inclusion, since you're on the episode, we're going to include you. We basically, we created a point system and we set a wager. So you have to agree to, to join in on the wager. I agree already. Yeah, I don't know. Whoever, is. whoever is the <laughs> most wrong, or I guess since this three of us, we'll change it slightly. Whoever is the most right doesn't have to eat hyper spicy noodles. And the other two people have to forfeit and, and uh, have really, really spicy noodles. So... Okay. The way that this is going to work, we've got our power rankings from before the split, and we have the actual rankings at the end of the split. And for every position that you get wrong, so let's say I put FPX in eighth place, right? That would be wrong. Mm. But I'll get minus seven points because I'm wrong by seven places, right? Because they finished in first. So the score lines, not massively positive, I'll admit. Um, I'm feeling confident, though. I'm feeling confident much. I think I think I got it. I think I won. Why? Well, <laughs> I, I'm impressed that you're confident, but uh, you are actually correct, sir. I'll read out the scores now. Ooh. Um, so, in first place, not eating any spicy noodles is Lyric wow. with a grand total of minus 39 points. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. so impressive. 39! <laughs> Um, your oh, worst wait. scores were in fifth and sixth with minus seven. That was IG and JDG. Um, and you thought they were terrible, but <laughs> boy, you didn't know what me and Jake had up our sleeves. Mm. Uh, because I came in second place <laughs> with a whopping minus 48 points. And then Jake very narrowly topped me there. With, with a clean minus 49, a single <laughs> point worse. <laughs> um, but we both got basically 10 points less than Lyric. And Le yeah. Lyric got minus 39. It's not a good showing. Uh, we'll, we'll, ha we'll have a graphic that shows you guys what we predicted. and, and uh, oh dear Yeah, Lord. I mean, granted, the point system was not exactly... Uh, easy to succeed in you, you there's no way you you end positive there's no way it's too it's you gain one point for being right and anything else is negative yeah. like you, you literally cannot unless you're you're like dude how do you how do you predict that split like how do you predict this split yeah. you said it before like lng was was a big one that threw me off i think even i mean i ig is predictable right but the jdg one that that yeah. was I, ig you'd like you know talk about russian roulette you know and british nightclubs man this is like you've got six bullets in the ch no five <laughs> bullets in the chamber it's the one missing that you're playing with with ig but yeah the jdg screwed i think would have screwed all of us for sure i mean honestly uh Trying to predict this split specifically was like playing Russian roulette with six bullets. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're just guaranteed to fail. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think LNG um, surprised people as well because I think a lot of people either thought they'd be really good or really terrible and they were exactly middle of the pack. Yep. Um, RA as well managed to get third. I'm not sure what people were expecting. Uh, but yeah, I think JDG and IG are the biggest. Also, actually LGD. I think LGD I expected to do a lot better than they ended True. up doing. Um, a lot of people were hyped on that. Not me. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, no, we get it, Lyric. You won, all right? All right. Stop <laughs> glowing. By a lot, man. Minus 39. Well you done. Know, you, you, know what, you know what sucks, too, is I actually really don't mind those noodles. I actually love them. I mean, Joe, you know this because we yeah. lived together in Shanghai for a bit, but I, I bought those. I ate them. They were great. Yeah. I did always cry, though, yeah. but that's part they, of the experience. Is it the shoyu ramen? Is it the shoyu, like, the red packet? Like the classic? It's the black, the Korean black packet yeah. ones. I can't remember the name of okay. the brand or whatever, but they they are... I, I tried them before, yeah. and I just had like one bite, and I was like, no. Okay. <laughs> no I'm just going to go hungry tonight. <laughs> okay, glad to <laughs> so, be on this episode. Good, good, good so start. yeah, Thanks so you, you joined at just the right moment, Jake. So yeah. you and I now will have to record ourselves eating these insanely spicy noodles. Uh -huh. I'll organize that afterwards, and we'll, we'll get you some noodles. Great. Um, and then we, we can cry together. We can do it on Discord if you like, and we can share in the pain. We can. Um, I'm, I'm down for that. That's okay. I mean, like, look, testing my spice, that's, that's all right. And to be fair, 
I do think I deserve it for, you know, putting IG so high once again. I feel like this is my <laughs> this is my comeuppance for sure. This this is my punishment <laughs> for my playoffs bracket prediction yep. that I did on my stream. It was just uh I mean it's it's all gone a bit gone a bit pear shaped. Speaking of the playoffs bracket, let's talk about playoffs, chaps. Um it's been a weird one already. It's been turbulent to say the very least. I mean, we started off, let's just talk about that first series. Round number one, LNG versus Sooning. Like, I thought that that might be a bit close. I did not expect a five-game banger like that. And I did not expect that after all these years, SOFM was still an LNG player in game <laughs> number five. Because like, after all these years, what he's still, he still faithful. It was, no, I, I mean, that wasn't really his fault, right? He was on Olaf when you're behind. There's only so much you could do. But, I mean, that, that series was so far and away beyond my expectations of what I was going to see from that series. But also LNG especially. Like, they look so much better. And, and soon it kind of looked so much worse than what I was expecting coming into that series. I mean, where did you guys sit? Would, did you expect five games? Did you expect LNG to win? So... I mean, I expected both teams to be kind of bad, which you would assume with how the series went, but I didn't expect five games. I thought Suiting would, not decisively, but Suiting would take it maybe 3-1 or something like that because Mm -hmm. to me, the biggest thing about both of these teams coming to playoffs is I just don't think they do anything. You know, I mean, we already know for SOFM, right? Lowest jungle proximity with literally everything. Like, they have lowest top, lowest spot, lowest mid, lowest team. Like, he just doesn't interact with his laners. They don't do much. LNG, they do a bit, but still, I feel like LNG rely a lot on, like, one of their lanes winning really hard. You know, Ospital Long has been, like, top or mid, just crushing lane, and then they could do things. But, you know, you have Ale, who has, I'd say, probably the biggest flip in the yeah. LPL, in my mind. Like, that Aatrox like, last year. He, he, <laughs> yeah, the Aatrox <laughs> last year, he... He gets solo killed or gets a solo kill every game. I think he's the only person where I know there will be something happening in that lane. And Icon, we've talked about this before. I don't think any of us can reliably believe in Icon. Mm. But man, I think uh, maybe we'll hit on it a bit more in the next series as well. But I think Icon's shown up so far. I think LNG overall have been way more proactive than I expected at all. We've been seeing like early ganks. I remember there was one early dive attempt in one of the games against Suning. It didn't work out. It was, I think it was a one for one in the end. But the fact that LNG are going for these plays is the thing that surprises me the most. Yeah. So I, I think overall LNG have definitely shown up better than what I expected. Still extremely messy, but I mean, hey, when when a lot of us, almost all of us had them going out in the first round, I think the fact that now they've gotten Hang through on. two is pretty mind-blowing. Oh, almost all of us. I will just come in and say that I predicted LNG 3-1. Now, there's no analysis behind this. I literally just think when <laughs> Angel's having the best split out of anyone in Sooning, there's a problem. And because of that, I'm like, well, look, and, and Bin's not bad by any means, but I don't think Bin's having like the same as, as 2020 Summer, um, his world's performance as well. Like People highlighted him. Um, I don't think SOFM's is is clean and like you know you talk about stats and stuff I'm like well I look past that and I just based it purely off the fact that Angel was my favorite player to watch of Sooning and that's an issue um also I believe yeah. the hyper <laughs> yeah. it's worth mentioning as well like statistically speaking I wanted to highlight Angel because <clears throat> obviously me and Dagda cast that series mm. right and we're like okay Angel and Icon both these guys have played they, I think they'd played like 17 and 19 that's, champions yeah respectively exactly. across the split like they were the two guys that are willing to play anything and by the way icon continuing that trend during playoffs but um we were like all right let's look at lady stats for these guys and for angel man his stats just suck like yeah. really it, he has big moments in team fights and stuff but when it comes to laning and things like it, it ain't pretty for angel and i think like the, the statistics definitely line up with what you're saying there, Jake, that Angel is not the guy that you want to be your, your, the person that you're leaning on, right? Because he's not going to be consistently the He's a mid-ranger. He's like, not. he's a, he's never been a top-tier mid laner. I don't think he ever will be. Like, Angel is someone who plays I th- well. I do think in spring 2020, he definitely was in that conversation for me. Definitely, I think in my mind, overperformed at Worlds as well from his summer performance, yeah, but... I, I, I agree with like your point, right? He's it, it feels like we haven't seen Angel show a ceiling of the rookie ceiling, the knight ceiling, the doing be ceiling, the fofo ceiling, even like people like 
you know what mold showed in that the 2020 summer split mm-hmm. right my, my thing with suiting or with both these teams and laners in general right is that because i feel like their teams are so flawed unless you are like truly a standout 1v9 level player i don't think your stats will ever look good because it's like well are Suning playing around? You know the matchups correctly. Are are Suning playing around his his timings correctly in terms of like on with support roams off recalls and you know SFM and things like this? And you know the answer is no, they're not. So I think statistically it would be hard for either of these guys to look good anyway. Mm-hmm. In my mind, when I predicted, I just thought, okay, well, I think when you have two teams that do have so many issues, I just tend to make it simplistic. Which team do I think is better players? Well, I thought Suning had better players than, than LNG. That that was pretty much the crutch of my argument of why I thought that they would be LNG. It's like, okay, Suning will probably have more winning lanes, and if Suning have more winning lanes, Suning will have more options, and I think neither of these teams know what to do when they don't have options. But, I mean, I guess I was totally wrong. LNG oh, had a lot you, of options. Anyone could have been wrong now, with that Jake, series. Like, I mean, that... that... Well, well... Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. You're right. Both teams you're right. great. Go on, sir, go Both on. Both teams work great. But to be oh. fair, like... I mean, watching LNG, I think it was the first two games where I was really impressed, where I thought it was like, it was LNG taking the reins. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, Sunny could have won that series. They could have come back, brought it back in a reverse sweep, but um, SOFM had, had some problems. But I think LNG just... continued to be be like this surprising team, and you're getting excited about them now. Well, you have to when they beat top esports. I just, the problem is, why did, why did game five have to be so terrible? Like, <laughs> Suni looked so awful in game number five. It was like they'd just run out of juice or something and just, like, take it in turns to one by one, run it into all five members of LNG and just die. It's like, guys, <laughs> this is playoffs. This is worlds on the line. This is to fight for top... Uh, I don't know. Like, And honestly, with then how top esports looked in the series against LNG... I actually think Suning, if they just finish that first best of five, have a legit chance of making oh, yeah. it to Worlds. Because Top Beastmost didn't exactly look good in the follow-up series either. The fact that LNG actually not even just beat Top Beastmost, they destroyed Top Beastmost. Mm. Like, uh, I- I'm like, kind of blown away. I'll be honest, for Top Esports. They played exactly the way I expected them to play. They had, I think they, had, I think they had a gold lead every game of the series. There might have been one where they didn't, but I remember almost every game they have like a two to three k gold lead at fifteen minutes. Sadly, that's not enough for the top esports level decision making you see come after that. But that's why it's so weird to me that it's a like, very sudden... eloquent roast. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's so weird, like the sudden extreme criticism of top esports or top esports players in my mind because. Heck, we talked about this uh, on the episode that didn't yeah. get to happen when we had Emily on, that in my mind, TS literally play the same that they always have since they've had, you know, the the core roster of like Jackie Love Knight, yep. 3690 Carsa. They don't play any differently. I, I feel like there's a lot of external factors of like, uh, whether it's things like meta or how other teams are playing or, you know, so on and so forth. I think individual forms do impact it a little bit. I think Jackie Love was the, the big one this split, the fact that they took out 369. So I don't think that is all completely there. But it's like T- TS fundamentally play the game wrong if you do kind of view this game in like black and white in a void, right? They just fundamentally play this game incorrectly. The 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 fact that they really don't trade side, the fact that they believe in taking every fight, that they, they're they willing to play off mechanical prowess and like make situations work. The fact that Kars is going to level three gank in pretty much every game. It's like, unless this team wins, I think all these guys are going to look yeah. bad, you know? And sure, I guess Knight is an outlier. Knight has been having an, an mm-hmm. insane split. But for TS, it's pretty much crush or get crushed, in my opinion. The way they play, there is actually no middle ground. Yeah. yeah. I guess I, I'm not surprised by the performance we saw from Top Esports. I'm more surprised by the performance we saw from LNG because I thought the way I was looking at this series, right, was that Top Esports are going to make a bunch of mistakes. They always make a bunch of mistakes. That's who Top Esports are. But I thought that that would be punishable, you know? I thought, or sorry, I thought LNG wouldn't be able to punish that. Like the good teams punish top esports, but the bad teams aren't necessarily as good at punishing top esports. That said, Ultra Prime punished top esports <laughs> pretty effectively. So if Ultra Prime like can do it- kind of punish themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. There was just so many opportunities to punish. It's kind of hard not to, not to take over at that point, right? And 
I mean, Ale as well is is having an amazing set of performances here. Like, a good I think that finishing split as well. On, on that note, like you know, talking yeah. about his whether he, whether he's the biggest coin flipper in the in the split or not. I mean, I think Ale finished strong. I'm I'm i his Camille is great. His Camille is great. I'm apologetic because you know I have chastised Ale in the past. Um, I think you know watching that Aatrox game made me tilt, and after that, I was a bit too toxic for him on broadcast, but. Um, I think I think Ali's gotten a lot better, which is nice. I think the biggest thing for me is like, you know, just continuing with LG for the second is that like players are kind of popping off. Like I, I don't know if it's fair to say within the lanes, but I'm re- you know I'm I'm bigger on Icon now. I watched Icon for years on OMG and I thought, dude, why is this guy in a starting role? I thought he'd come to LNG and he'd quickly be subbed out. I literally thought, why the f- why is Icon on the rim? Um, it's a good it's a good it's a good change, but I think I think Tarzan's a reason that he's he's they're all looking so good. Like I think Tarzan is the big uh, you know, uplifter for this team. <laughs> yeah. And 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 light when he's specifically on vein. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a <laughs> this like parentheses around that sentence, like <laughs> light on vein. <laughs> subject to terms and conditions that he's he's on the I, vein. I do feel like for LNG, I agree with what Joe said earlier, the fact that I'm more surprised at how LNG played than T S. Yep. Because right I think all of us expected TS to win early games like they were in that series, right? They're, they're just going to win their lanes. They're going to pick for winning lanes as well, as they pretty much did all four games. But the fact that LNG were so good at transferring pressure around the map, because not only do we need to highlight Ale, because I honestly feel like Ale was set up for so much success, the fact that Iwandi was consistently like in top lane in this series and that Tarzan was consistently in top lane, it's like those are things I didn't think I'd see from LNG ever. But LNG were so do- good at doing it consistently across this. So I think it not only shows like they were proactive, their individuals were playing well, but they had good prep coming into to this series as well. So I don't know. I will still, I honestly, I don't think I will ever predict LNG to win. I think L- against, I already know against RG, I'm not predicting them to win. And, and if they then win against RG, I'm not going to predict them to beat FPX. I just can't believe in this team. In good faith, I cannot look at this roster and ever like, think that they will win I, i'm i'm stoked they're winning it's awesome it's a great story but i i just can't believe it it's still just kind of like a mirage it's, it's like it's i draw it back to what i remember of a round one run where like remember jdg in 2019 spring no one thought they were going to win because it was like well their bot lane was weak imp was still like mediocre within the league yeah gal was seen as a middling you know mid laner zoom was still great but back then it was flawless and it was like well Flawless isn't top tier jungle material, but he was really hit or miss. Was. And, and there was there was such a middling team that it was either out in round one or out in round two, and no one predicted for them. So I, I like that we're getting it again. I like that we're getting the round one run runs. I should say, um, it's it's surprising yeah. to, to actually see like LNG doing so well. And you're right against RNG. I, I would never I would never be like, oh, this team's going to keep on going. But it's it's so much fun to watch. It's really. I guess the thing is, right now, n- n- now we're all gonna doubt ourselves, right? We're all gonna write RNG, and we're all gonna be like, "Wait a minute, wait a nah, minute." Nah, 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 nah. I have no doubt in my mind that RNG wins that series. We'll, we'll come back to that though. I want to, I want to <laughs> talk predictively uh, later in the episode. I want to round out the the series first. I do just want to quickly point out how crazy it is that it's the top half of the bracket that is the one with a, a round one run, right? Because we all talked about. Like on the bottom side of the bracket is WEOMG, then WBLG, maybe WE moves forward and goes WERA. And like you could kind of believe that that run from WE and you could believe that BLG would move forward. Um, on the top half, it was like, wow, the top half is so stacked, guys. Everyone, the top half, they should all be a world, but none of them are going to make it. Yeah. Like, all of this. Sudik Toppy spots suck. <laughs> like they don't deserve to be a world. But he's like LNG have kind of just just like Gumba stomped each step to make it up to RNG yeah. and have now qualified for regionals. This was not the stacked side of the bracket, guys. It was all an illusion. It was all just the popular teams, not necessarily the good teams. It's the bottom half of the bracket that's actually uh, the scary ones. I think with WE, um, I think have stepped up massively. Let's talk about their run as well because i don't think there's as much to talk about in terms of the matchups since we have played six playoff games so far Mm. and won all six of them omg and blg both just getting swatted aside uh, by we and i have to say i didn't think this team would ever be able to move on from teacher Mm. 
he's still in that substitute position, and I was thinking maybe he was the answer. It feels like they figured it out. And even with the Silas nerfs, even with um, Shanks not always playing Silas every single game, it feels like WE have actually come into their own and actually look like a really solid team. I'm, a, I'm very impressed by how cleanly they beat BLG. Well, I, all I was going to say is like, cleanly in the first 15 minutes... Not necessarily, like, because Lyric and I cast that one. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the best thing was, like, you know, when we're setting up narratives, we talked about cleanliness of early game, setting up top side ahead, and how WE were going to do it, and then how um, BLG were going to do it. And then we didn't look at top side at all because it was just solo kills, and then junglers were elsewhere. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like, WE stepped up in a massive way, further to your point, when we started seeing the mid game and punishing BLG for overstaying. Like, the skirmish is coming out, and Lyric's favorite word of the series, which I definitely made my favorite word, decisiveness. Is that the word? Holy hell, please tell me that was good, good, because I can't forget that during the <laughs> you series. You can't do that setup <laughs> and then forget the word. I forgot it during the series so many he times. Did it all, he did it all broadcast. He Like, literally every game, he's like, he's like Lyric, what, what, what's that thing at WER? Yeah. What is it? Uh... A, a coordinated aggressive <laughs> like yeah. oh decisive yeah cool you know five seconds of dead air waiting for the lyric to answer me um but yeah <laughs> no, no 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 wait 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 the five seconds of dead air was when you were going off on some other point you're like yeah i love this right now shanks is being so uh, uh lyric, <laughs> what's the word it's like what 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 do you what want from word? me? And it was a completely different okay. word. Whatever you were thinking right. of was not what you wanted from me. All brother. right, look, I forgot the word, but they were decisive. Um, how do you like? You look at each game, and the funny thing about that series is that every game felt the same. Game one, game two, game three, yeah. all punished. Now, game three, granted, like was a much faster early game. Like it did look like BLG were going to win game three, but then it happened again, and around the same area. The same area as game one, like, enemy jungle once again. I'm like, how did BLG do this? Enemy jungle <laughs> right next to wolves. Between wolves and blue buff was always, like, their doom, right? I'll be honest. I'm actually not as hyped on WE as you would think I should be with, like, a 6-0 run so far, but it's like, okay, OMG... It's funny because I actually don't think OMG was the worst, like, team coming into playoffs in terms of, like, how they play as a five-man unit. But, I mean, they're by far the worst players. They're by far, like, the, the worst laners in the league. And I love that W recognized that. They just counterpicked them and they just smashed them. But in this series, it's like, okay, BLG has a lot of flaws as well. So I think was the, the bigger takeaway for me was, like, okay, BLG's early games on point. BLG's macro and, like, early game rotations of transferring pressure, I love it. It was so beautiful good. to see. And then WE just... I don't know how, how every time... The game one, one I think, was the most... Not egregious, but the... I don't want to say lucky, but it's the one where, like, okay, that you can pretty much pinpoint to a single mistake that threw away the game yep. for BLG, right? When PP God went and got that ward and opened up for pick, and then BLG kind of funneled it one by one. The other games, I think, is more on BL, uh, WE uh, find, like, creating their own windows and playing around them well, but still, I feel like WE themselves had a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of mechanical misplays in, in a lot of the team fights. I think some of the overconfidence moments, even like Breathe picking the Riven, was super cool. But I mean, did, the did fact that much. the Riven came in, he, uh, you, you can see he probably wasn't as comfortable with like playing that matchup as maybe he thought in his mind. He'd, he'd be able to, came in, made the mistake, got solo killed by the uh, the enemy. It was, was Camille. It? Camille? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, got solo killed by the Camille, then did absolutely nothing the rest of the game. And I don't know. I think they're pr in pretty good standing for the fact that it was nice that we got to see them play around their bottom lane because I think that was a big thing for all of us, right? It was breathe and base or die for WE all split long. So the fact that it's like, cool, Elk can pop off now. Missing, I think, is another big highlight to me. Like, wow, Missing literally hit six games where he had a positive impact yep. every game. Missing did not int. Missing did not run it down. He was, like, solid in team fights. He was looking for engages. But just the messiness of of all their games so far and the lack of I don't want to say lack of macro I want to say the reliance on just being better in the grouped up 5v5 than the enemy team is kind of scary for me going forward mm -hmm. I do think that luckily again once we hit on the future series they are on the right side of the bracket for that sort of play style but yeah to me WE are more of a mixed bag compared to LNG where it's like oh god LNG are just stacked they're just solid everything just looks pretty good right now so let, let's just continue this conversation then because 
we've kind of talked about the series that have already happened. So let's move into talking a little bit more predictively. We may as well just stick with WE. Um, as they move into their series against RA, because I think on that point, one of the things that RA excels at right is is their mid game. And if they come out of the laning phase strong, then they can just dominate the mid game, snowball from there and, and win the game, right? I do feel like WE have obviously a very strong laner in the top side. I think missing an elk have been exceptional in the 2v2. They've also had some really terrible 2v2s, mm -hmm. but as you say, missing has been having a really good playoff so far. Um, I do worry about the mid lane, though, in this matchup. Fofo versus Shanks, like like we said, you know, Shanks, bit of a Silas one trick coming into playoffs. He hasn't played Silas yet. He's played the Syndra, he's played LeBlanc. Uh, he played something else as well, I forget what. Um, but against Fofo, especially if Fofo gets the counter pick, I have a horrible feeling that Shanks is going to get absolutely demolished. Like, I think that the mid gap could be just everything in this series and Fofo could just take over, just run around the map, just killing everyone. I mean, what do you guys think? Do, do, you, do you think that the sidelines are going to be more important? Do you think Fofo is going to be able to have this level of impact? I'm kind of curious to hear your opinion, Jake, just for the fact that I think on the broadcast team, I'm probably the most, uh, like, favoring of how RA plays. Like, I actually really like RA, a big t difference to spring when I hated them. But I, I, it feels like to me, at least, a lot of a lot of other people on our team are still kind of skeptical of RA and how they play the game because it is still very, I don't want to say slow, but it's very, like, by the book, right? RA, to me, are the literally the personified version of like well we're just gonna wait five minutes for the next yep. rate to come up right so so I, I, in your mind like like wh where's your mojo going, uh, Jake? how you feel r-a-w-e i mean the thing is like the undeniable fact is that, like fofo will spank shanks like fofo is and i've been opened up because remember last year i didn't really i didn't really think about fofo he wasn't in my top five list and then i think we, we were out walking the streets somewhere jordan and i um and you're like, oh, why is Fofo not in that list? And I'm like, wait, why is Fofo not in that list? And then I started watching more and more of RA, and I have this year as well, and I've thought, oh, shit, this guy's a good laner. <laughs> this guy's a really freaking good player. Um, I do favor RA if I'm going to use my brain. I favor RA because I do think mid's going to be massive. However, when I look at WE and their strengths, and what I didn't see in the series versus LNG was like Beishang paying the same amount of attention we saw in the regular season up to the top lane and just like double downing on getting breathe up. And then, you know, again, the Herald plays that Lyric and I talked about in our segment. Um, I feel like top side of the map for WE is, is something that could really just like um, imbalance RA because if we're talking about strength of lanes. Sure. Mid is strong, but WE's early game, if, if they're able to pivot and, and not let RA postpone and play like this slower style, then, then obviously, like, WE, I favor them just taking over the map from the top side out. And it's, like, very analytical, and it's not too exciting of an answer, but I, I think I think Breathe is definitely better Honestly, than Cube. Even though Cube hasn't had a... Yeah, I, 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 honest, I think, like, what you're... I, I just love how you preface that, well, if I'm going to start using my brain, but uh, I actually think where, where, where you hit on was correct. <laughs> Never done it before. <laughs> I think where you hit on right was, was, like, a good way of looking at it, right? Because I think if you think of it individualist, individually right i mean i think everyone's gonna favor fofo over shanks and shanks though didn't get like necessarily dominated or like solo killed repeatedly or taken down by zika i do think zika kind of mid-gapped him in that last series in terms of the mm. impact he was able to have on the game uh, bot lane this one's the biggest question mark for me because i would honestly favor i blame hung 100 of the time if you asked me this before playoffs right now i don't know and i think both these guys are kind of similar in the fact that you know both lanes want to look for 2v2 yeah. kills. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't necessarily have matchups where where they're favored or they should, they're always going to look for the angle. So I don't know. I'm still going to give that person, for me, slight favor to uh, RA. But top jungle, I think, is completely WE favored. I think Lo Yen has been the worst player on her at him. Not to say that Lo Yen's necessarily bad, but Lo Yen is... I mean, he's... He falls into the same trope of people like Carsa or SOFM in my mind where and those guys aren't the same at all but my point of being such an extreme in terms of how he plays the game that it's just so it's so weird it's like Lillian kind of warps the map around him mm -hmm. to being about him with 
how it's about like this this heavy invade style about how aggressive he wants to be in some situations how much he values farm also like i think he's very 1v1 oriented in terms of his mindset about league of legends sure. and wanting to get the most for himself so th to me that one will be interesting but i think beishong has a much more well-rounded uh play style beishong also was like the the silent mvp in my mind in their blg yeah. series and then i think everyone favors everyone favors breathe over over uh you'd have Cube, to. right i think like you i think cube's fine and i think i like the way ra kind of uses him where ra having a team that have been willing to do things like we're just gonna randomly blind pick mundo here and just be like <laughs> okay cube you're on your own because we we know we're gonna play around you know pretty much everyone else except you so i think that's fun i think it's quirky and gives ra flair but i will say like just on that point specifically if they blind pick mundo you know breathe is gonna pick fiora like 10 times out of 10. true and i I want to see that so bad. Please, Blind Pick Mundo, please. I'm begging you, all right, because that would be such a fun game to watch. Getting to see Breathe just really flexing in a game like that. I don't know. Sorry, continue, Larry. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt. I just, I just the, the I best, had an epiphany. <laughs> the best thing would be if, if you have that epiphany and the opposite happens. Like, he comes out, Mundo Solo kills him at, like, level <laughs> three or something. And then Cube takes over. Cube has a standout series. We're all yeah. talking about Cube, but... To me, it's so hard to, to look at this with just how with the way W have played in their two different series because I think it's been very different. Because, mm -hmm. like Jay said, I don't know if WE is going to be like, okay, well, uh, RA's weakness is top. We're going to go back to how we were playing all split, or if it is going to be more fluid and more flexible. I still think I favor RA. I think RA, in terms of how they like to draft, draft for counter pick lanes. They're all decently strong laners. I don't think they should fall behind early. And I think almost everything else they do in the game is decently solid. My biggest thing about RA is they make so many like individual mistakes late game Lu yen has gotten caught out so many yeah. times like walking into the enemy jungle or trying to i actually think it was against we where he kept trying to engage fights onto missing specifically blow his whole combo gets kited out and then we turns deletes him and takes the rest of the fight with a 5v4 so there's a bit of an x factor there i won't go too deep into it because i mean we have a, we have a time limit on these episodes but i think ra's favored for the fact that like i know what i could i know what i'm gonna get from ra right and contrary to the rest of the LPL, when it comes to RA, I actually like that. I like that I know what a team's going to do every single time. True, less chaos. I, I want to say that, like, yeah. you've made me start thinking about bot lane. I feel like bot lane is, like, my biggest slanting it's factor. It's so exciting. It's, it is. It, it is, like, make or break. And I never thought about it. But, yeah, Elk and High Boy feel like very similar players. You could get the, the best of the best. But then you can get a random moment where High Boy or Elk are, are moving around Dragon. They're not with the team. You're wondering why are they frontlining here? Like Elk did it towards the end of the regular season. Like, why are you frontlining a Ziggs? Uh, iBoy does that shit as well. Man, he's Callista games. Like, sometimes I wonder who pays this guy? Oh, God. That yeah, iBoy is good. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't quite go that far. Yeah, I wouldn't quite go good, that far. Man. But yeah, definitely. I, and I would say Hung and, Hung and Missing are somewhat similar in the same regard, right? Where it's like similar champion pools, similar style of play, where, where quite often they are like the Leona tool for the team that has to be the front line, has to be the hard engage for the squad. Sometimes can be known to go a little bit too deep, mm. mess it up a little bit, get caught out, end up going down. Um, I do feel like both of these bot lanes are relatively similar to one another and it could be exciting. That said, we also could just see Elk playing Ezreal every game, missing never being in the bottom lane and just missing goes and participates in the fight that goes on on the top side of the map and Elk just True. has to farm it out. But in that scenario, the question is, for this whole series is to me does ra try and match the top side also move hung up and like try and contest herald or do they just dive l over and over again because i think it's gonna be the second option yep yeah i think 100 percent right I, I i think there's no world where ra opt into a we're gonna fight you where you're putting mem members they're just gonna always go opposite side of the map and i think actually maybe not always opposite side of the map i think they'll always go towards spot lane mm -hmm. ra is just so predictable in the sense that RA does everything pretty much by the book. It's like they're going to take Harold if they have pushing lanes and they're, they're in a position where the enemy can't contest them and if you can't contest them, they're going to take the fight if you went into them. If not, they're going to back off and keep farming. It's like you you can literally predict everything RA is going to do before they do it. I feel like even the mistakes. I feel like even when it's like, okay, well, I know at this moment Lo Yan's going to go here do this or I know iBoy's going to do this and it's like I don't know, man. It's great. It, it's great that you literally have a team that is so opposite to almost everyone else in LPL. And I'm, I'm, I'm all. You for have it. good game sense, and you can see them coming from a mile away. <laughs> you know what they're gonna yeah. do. Yeah. Which, right? To be fair, if anyone can do it, that also means WE can do yeah. it, though. But so 
you know the scary thing i think about ra and i'll i'll round out the conversation and we'll move over to the other side of the bracket as well but um i think the scary thing about that is that when you have players like fofo on the squad it doesn't necessarily matter that you know it's going to happen it's just whether or not you even can stop it happening right because some of the mechanical talent this team has and like iBoy on a good day it's going to take over a game right uh, especially with the fact that Vayne is kind of meta right now I want to see iBoy's Vayne that's that's a classic that's like old school um sure. we'll move on let's talk about the top side of the bracket here LNG and RA uh, wait hang on no LNG and RNG sorry <laughs> too many R's um so LNG have had a pretty good run. I do think RNG are a pretty heavy favorite. How much does the BLG series change your guys' minds about RNG coming into playoffs? Like that series that they lost to BLG in the regular split right at the end, does that change your opinion coming into this matchup? Does that like dissuade you from thinking RNG is going to be a heavy favorite? Because for me, I'm still thinking, I, I think this might even be a 3-0 to RNG, honestly. Dude. Everybody gets one. That's all I'm going to say. I looked at that series and I'm like, nah, nah, <laughs> I don't care. It, it was, it was. And like, I mean, everyone's coming in going, BLG's RNG's Kryptonite. Oh, lucky they're not on the same side of the bracket. I'm like, piss off. Like, it doesn't matter if they're on the same side of the bracket. <laughs> it's a best of five. And I, I trust RNG in a best of five. I, I trust RNG's like, like that nine win streak. I trust their end of season performance. Let's be truthful and tell it is what it is their half later half season performance if i could get words out so a hundred percent i take nothing from that blg series and, and lyrics right it was close close enough for me to be like well we still got the, the strengths of rng in the series and, and you know that's what it is i think uh for me, RN, especially coming to best fives, I think RNG is the team I look at and I believe most in for a best of five. I'm not, I'm not saying I would favor them over FPX. I, I doubt we'll talk about this this episode, but I'm pretty, pretty sure I've been, and a lot of us have been pretty vocal about in terms of FPX looking like the favorite to win the split. Mm -hmm. But in terms of just like a team who can utilize best of fives, like be able to change their prep, pull out like different things, and we've seen them do, I think RNG are the team that get the biggest benefit from this. So I think against LNG, I don't know if they'll 3 0. So, so th this is what LMG have done to me. Before, in any other universe, I would have predicted the 3 0 100%. When, when we have to type down our prediction, I'll probably still type 3 and 0. But I kind of feel like maybe LNG can have a game where you have, whether it's Yasuo or Diana or some kind of like really cool, like aggressive mid jungle duo, and you take advantage of Kryon. You take advantage yeah. of Kryon away, you take them down, and maybe uh, their bot lane makes laning mistakes because Galen being. I, I don't think are infallible in lane. They have made some pretty egregious mistakes, gotten 2v2 killed, or uh, Ming's gotten chunked and had to, like, recall early or vice versa with Gala. So I think there's windows there for LNG to be able to take a game. So I definitely think LNG will. But I think the most exciting thing about this matchup is if LNG just do what they did against top esports, where it's like, well, now Iwandi's in the top lane, and Tarzan's in the top lane, and Icon's roaming up. It's like, well, we're going to have two teams doing exactly the, the same thing. But... I think RNG are just so well-rounded. RNG are a good team fighting team. RNG are the best team still right at knowing how to play around side lanes before you cross the map when they can't take team fights. Like, there's just too many things that RNG do well that I think they should be able to win this pretty commandingly. Can't disagree with that. Can't disagree with that. I don't have much to add, honestly. I it's think it's hard, know, though, right? It's like, I mean coming back to what we said at the start and what's been said I, so many I times i don't think it is hard no 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 okay it's hard to say in what capacity i i'm 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 really hard on the train of rng smashing but i think yeah. I, I i am tempted to give lng a game or two first first round run Ooh. is is really <laughs> really strong from any LPL oh, team. Oh my god, I love it. The I first love round it. run is so influential, and I don't even have anything to back <laughs> so, it up apart from previous so, years. No, no. And the mojo. Hey, hey, You're hey, saying hey, they've hey, taken I was, I was the say, suiting top yes. esports mojo? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if me and Munch have mojo, dude, you can oh have your, your first round run. Like, oh god. What should happen? Uh, yeah. What should happen out I of mean, nowhere? Like, I could believe that that ends up happening, but I. I have no faith that LNG can do it. I, I, in my mind, like, so I was having this conversation with Lyric earlier. In, in, two of the 
teams that have been referred to with mojo have died now sooning who realistically this year have not had mojo anyway no. but top esports they're the mojo team they died the mojo it, realistically the team that remains in the tournament with mojo is fpx but there's a way that that mojo can be passed to <laughs> fpx because lng have stolen the mojo right now which is why you believe in them jake i don't know if you realize this but this it was the I, i'm realizing the it now yeah, it's the, it's the magic of the LPL. Yeah. Um, so LNG has stolen the mojo from Top Esports. Either either RNG steals the mojo from LNG in this next series, or LNG carries that mojo forward and takes it to FPX. Either one of them is going to move forward into FPX. FPX then wins that series uh -huh. and takes the mojo for themselves. And FPX with mojo... I don't know if I could think of anything scarier in the LPL right now. Uh, you know, you know what I just realized though. You, you have literally turned Mojo into the fact that any team that wins has Mojo. Therefore, Mojo is always right. You have literally twisted it into Mojo being absolute, so we cannot it's lose. Not even much. I love it, Goldberg. Get get out of here, my boy. <laughs> you just can't win. Mojo is absolute. Mojo is too strong. I, the the ultimate conclusion is that it's essentially the uh, it's like the unofficial world championship title, right? Where it just just passes <laughs> on to just, whoever wins. Literally, just looking at <laughs> whoever up, wins the LPL just wins the Mojo. Do you know? I I typed that in as we we're having a chat because I wanted to see if Mojo equals unofficial world champion if it actually lined up, but uh, unfortunately, it's mm -hmm. with WE. But to you, to WE WE surely have some Mojo to you, like somewhat. Does breathe breathe himself. They're not Mojo. But W E so but they, they have might be. Breathe is Mojo? Breathe has to be Mojo. <laughs> like, you, you have to... I mean, Breathe, breathe is really look, look, good look, look, look. and he's really exciting, but I don't know if he's Mojo. Like, 369 is yeah. Mojo because he could just yes. fucking sprint it, right? But he could take over the game. Whereas I, Breathe I, is I pretty gonna much say, just going to win. Yeah, Mojo has to literally be, like, the highest high possible... But also with so the, the shy has there. the highest mojo still, then, ever. Well, well, the no, shy no, is so, pure mojo. Well, so, yeah, I, agree. I was gonna say, I, I, IG are also on the mojo list. Oh, We're just God. not talking about them because they didn't make playoffs. The but... 13th. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rogue Warriors. That's that's the team with mojo. That's, okay, right? I agree that's with that. Team with they should have gone to Worlds. I would have been happy to send them as a the fourth seed if they made the run and if they <laughs> okay. kept playing like they did. No. Rogue Warriors like fourth seed. Rogue Warriors. Rogue Warriors should have made Worlds last year with Haro, but this year... Any year, as okay. long as Rogue Warriors get let's, there. Um, let, let's round up the, the conversation of Mojo, because <laughs> I feel like we're just we're just going on a whole weird tangent now. It's good. Uh, this is starting to become not even relevant to LPL. Um, oh, don't say that. I want, to, I want to have a conversation here, because we've got about 10 minutes left, about potential regionals, right? We have our top six teams and the way that the bracket and the way that the championship points have like ended up across the course of this year means that the top six are going to be the potential Wills teams, right? Two of these teams won't make it, four of these teams will. So for the sake of argument, um, or do you know what? I'm not actually going to add any caveats here. Out of these six teams, which teams are going to worlds in your guys minds because i think top esports obviously was one of the ones that was in the conversation yep i, I think that was the, the the easiest one to predict as the fourth team now they're out of the picture i think it's a lot harder to have a solid comfortable prediction moving forwards let Where me guys let me start so that i don't i people can't say i copied lyric or copied you joe because I, I you know, you know <laughs> i don't want to be that guy just coming on the show first time and th i respect it no um, fire away, fire away. So here's what I think is going to happen. Because I want to point out that if, if LNG made a run or if RA made a run, then it doesn't matter. RNG can qualify second based on points. I've already looked at this, 130 points. Like, it's insane. Like, RNG are in such a good position. Um, so are EDG and FPX in the same regard, right? Um, but we're mm -hmm. assuming they get there. I think FPX is going to make the run to finals, by the way. I think that's going to be our first seed. I don't know if, if I can give you my one to four seeds and that leads into regionals. Um, sure. And I think EDG, sorry, I think RNG are going to be the second seed. So they're out of the picture. I think FPX, RNG. When we get to regionals, the highest seeding, I believe, is going to be EDG because their points are insane. They're 100% they're going to be that that third seed at regionals. Um, so they get the qualifying match. I think they beat whoever they come up against. They're too clean of a team. And with the teams left remaining, like I I, I don't have faith that, that anyone could beat it. Okay, they could, but I don't have faith that anyone's going to beat EDG. Um and I think we're looking at 
uh, with RA still in the picture, WE and LNG, the other three teams. Um, honestly, oh, I'm gonna, it's hard, isn't it? I think it's um, real hard. I think WE might lose Stop. to RA, but then they come back and then they make a run for fourth seed. I don't know. I'm liking it. Oh, I might say well, RA. I'm just saying, but I'm going to leave it there. I'm just saying, like usually, I wouldn't have said WE was a, a Mojo type team, but that that run right there that you're just talking about, That's that mojo. would be very Mojo. That's Mojo. That would be exceptionally that Mojo. Would, that would. That would. <laughs> lyric where you I sitting, think. Mate? So I think for me, I have the same top two, right? I don't know which order, but one of RNG or FX will split, the other will go on points. Mm -hmm. And for EDG, honestly, I feel like the biggest team in my mind, and right, this could be a stretch, this could be biased, this could be whatever. In my mind, the biggest team that was a threat to EDG going to Worlds was Top Esports. Mm -hmm. If in this regional bracket there was any way to where, like, if Top Esports would have made it and then EDG had to play Top Esports first... I think TS are the best stylistic team to taking down EDG, dismantling their mental, and then maybe EDG on some off day lose to a team like RA. So EDG, from the fact that TS are gone, again, in, in my mind, my crazy mind, I don't know what I'm saying, EDG make it. I, I think these other three teams are no threat to EDG. EDG are just so solid. I think EDG will always beat teams with... I don't want to say worse than them, but I feel like every other team in this group is like specialized in like certain areas where they're strong and have other weaknesses to where EDG across the board this is pretty much decent to good at everything and that's why they lose to teams that super excel in one area like the RNGs or the top esports or the FPXs of the world but yeah I think EDG will go through and then when I look at the bottom side I'm gonna put my faith in rare Adam uh, I don't know it feels weird you know it, it all feels I actually don't weird. feel weird Oh, any of them, any of them. I, I don't want to pick any of them, dude. I don't. <laughs> Just what? How are these three our teams that were, that dude, were sent into Worlds? I will say, like, of all of the teams, like, I want WE to make it. And for the sake of for the sake of myself, I'm going to predict WE as the fourth seed. And I agree with everything else. With I think RNG, FBX, and EDG are the top three. I think that's, I think that's yeah. so easy. reasonably unarguable at this point. Um, I will say... Out of these teams, when I think about who's going to succeed at the World Championship, especially in planes, I actually think RA is the best out of LNG, WE, and, uh, and RA. I agree. I actually think RA maybe even makes it to best of fives. That's true. Right? Like, when they you think about well. a team as consistent as RA that wins lanes as consistently as RA wins lanes, like, on international competition, if you can just win lane, you're very likely going to win the game. Like, so many other teams don't have super strong laners in every single role. So many other teams internationally don't have um, the, these situations where they fall so far behind in the early game because they're getting gapped in every single lane, right? That doesn't happen in a lot of regions. So I think R8, if they actually make it to Worlds, could legitimately look like a very strong team when it comes to that international competition. I could easily see this being a yeah. quarterfinal team at Worlds. I, I, I got to be honest... The more I think about it, the more I think I also would want WE to be that team just because of breathing Beishong. But I think I think it probably will be RA. And Munch, remember me and you had this conversation on a past episode about like the expectation for a fourth seed? And I think RA will... RA, I can't imagine underperforming mm. it. RA will, I think at very least, get in their group and will at least make 3-3 in their group and then have a mm. chance of getting out. But I think RA, out of these... The three teams have the best chance of overperforming that expectation, True. like definitely making out of their group, and then you know who knows, maybe have a competitive best of five in quarters. That'd be nice. And I think also you, oh, sorry, uh, you can expect a much more consistent performance than we got from LGD, right? I think is the big thing that I want to <laughs> hey, put across. Hey, hey. No, no flame to LGD, but like That's I didn't anticipate word. LGD doing that well at Worlds, you know. At least, at least they got into groups. <laughs> you know, at least they got into groups. Well, again. To, to be fair, they went they went three and three. Yeah, yeah. I honestly believe that should be the expectation of an LPL fourth seed. It's like they they can beat every team in the group and they can get out. Doesn't mean they will get out, but they yeah. could. So I think I think RA definitely meets that. I I, I believe WE probably would as well. LNG is still the team that I just don't know. I have no idea how LNG would do at Worlds, but. I don't know, man. Mate, but between I don't even know how LNG are going to do in round three. Never ride a world. Like, <laughs> LNG yeah. is an enigma at this point. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think, I think Worlds is easier than round three, dude. Worlds is easier than facing RNG <laughs> in a best of five. Dude. Worlds is easier than facing FPX in a best of five. Let, let's be dude, real. We have, strong, we have three strong teams. Like That's why the fourth seed, for well, my <laughs> mind, I'm like, look, any of these three teams, 
whoever we send. I, I mean, I, I agree with you guys. I think Ari is the strongest Shit. fourth. Like, if I think logically for once in my life and I go, who would do the best? you talking about how <laughs> well-rounded Ari again. Yeah, I, I just have to do it every so often just so I keep up. Um, Ari is, like, the best fourth seed for LPL to do well in my mind, but... I just have this funny feeling that WE are going to be the fourth seed because it's something to do with Breathe and Beishang yeah. and then Elk and Missing aren't inting like normal. They're, like, they're not throwing games away. You get stability and bot. You even get a strong 2v2. And then for some reason, Ooh. Shanks is like gapping people like Fofo. Dude, you just made me realize something. I've been thinking about this around the whole time. I've been thinking, you know what? I hate WE because WE bench small. But <gasps> if WE make worlds... <laughs> Mole makes worlds! I was right all along! Year of the Mole, baby! Let's go WE four seed! I'm changing Comes my back tune! To group stage. We got it! Mole starts dunking people, right. Shanks is off Dude, the bench he the whole doesn't, time. He doesn't need to... No, no. He Zoe comes play. into the mat. Look, if, 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 if WE win worlds, Mole is on stage and Mole gets to hold a trophy and gets a medal yeah. as well. And, the end of the, and, and at the end of the day, I am correct, even if I am wrong. <laughs> Can't argue with that. That's science right there. That is science. science. And a bit of mojo. Um, a little bit of mojo if Mole goes to A lot of mojo. Actually, yeah, wait. WE has Mole. Of course they have mojo. What are we talking about? I was going to say, V5 with the ultimate mojo, mojo team. Oh, my goodness. It's so true. Oh, we figured it out. We've we've conquered it. Well, I to, to be honest, that's kind of the note that I want to end the episode on. <laughs> I feel like mojo this is the perfect... Again finishing point we, we started with mojo we finished with mojo that's just the way we roll here on the last hit um jake thank you so much for joining us for an episode Thanks appreciate you taking the time out um it's it's been a pleasure having you on uh, it's been great you you've brought the mojo to the episode it was and already here it. <laughs> it was already here i just you know i just sparked what i could so thank you again it's very appreciated. And Lyric, as always, thanks for joining us. Love well, you. Um, but with that said, we're going to round out the episode. We will be back with another episode after the next round or two. I'm not entirely sure on the date, but just keep checking the channels and stuff, and I'll tweet about it and stuff. Uh, other than that, though, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. And until then, we'll see you in Champs Select.